Greetings ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Sonic 2006 okay. Let's Play. So now we're finally out of the apocalyptic setting, you know, we're back in Soliana's home world, unfortunately, you know. It's going, it's going back to a familiar formula where you complete a stage and you're back in the hub world. You complete another stage and going back to the hub world. You know, it's the only thing I liked about the apocalyptic setting was that you go from stage to stage with no bullshit in between. But unfortunately, that's it's not the case. I'm like, we're, it's, it's Superman 64 all over again. It's we're, we're going through more rings and this time we're actually a flying character. But uh, the, the whole gist of this uh, side mission is the Legend of the Three Musketeers, but. Okay, anyway, pretty much uh, there are three parts to this mission, each involving uh, the character with their own, uh, using their attributes to, you know, complete the mission. For this one, we have Tails, who's uh, flying through a lot of rings, and that's all you're doing. It's, you know, something we've already done, like, oh, well, I think we've only done once at this point. And it's, you know, it's, with, with Tails, it's just, if you're not flying, you're not going anywhere, because his ground speed is so abysmally slow. But it's still, it's not that hard, just, you know, just move the camera to where you can see the rings and just fly through them. But the second part of the uh, challenge is the strength challenge. This is where we're taking control of Knuckles, and okay. So, what I was getting into uh, with Flame Core is just, Knuckles combos are just so delayed and so slow. Nothing like the Adventure Days or Heroes, actually. I can't wait to get going. Oh, I hate that. I hate the delivery of that line. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of Dan Green because I love how, you know, cheesy and hammy he can get. But that one sounds so phoned in. I just, oh, man. <laughs> I hate that line. Well, I hate the delivery of that line. But anyway, the, 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 the point of uh, the Knuckles mission is just to break a lot of these styrofoam boulders. And yes, they're made of styrofoam because look how, look how... Look how shoddy they look when they fall apart. It's like they were already broken and someone's just waiting for them to knock them down again. But the thing is, again, like what I have, the problem I have with Knuckles' combos is that they're so delayed and they... You know, there are times where you swear you're not hitting any of the, uh, the attack buttons anymore, but Knuckles is still trying to finish off the combo. And it's just, it's clunky. That's the best way I could put it. It's slow and it's clunky. It's nothing like the Adventure in Heroes days. But the final part of the Legends of the Three Musketeers challenge is Sonic. Now, technically, you can run to where the gold ring is right now, and you'll still pass the mission no problem. But for this part of the, uh, the side quest, they want you to explore the rest of the hub world and locate Tails and Knuckles. I, I don't know, I'm guessing there's like there's some kind of meaning of friendship there. I'm not exactly sure what they were trying to go for. But you can, you know, sidetrack a bit and collect more points or go through more rainbow loops which I'm doing right now you know and Knuckles is somewhere around here I think it's actually right past this this bridge um, but like I said before you don't have to go out of your way to locate Tails or Knuckles you could head straight for the gold ring and you'll pass the mission no, no difference whatsoever you know and even then if you if you go directly towards the gold ring you'll still have enough points from the time bonus to you know get the S rank so it's, it's pointless really and that is the Legends of the Three Musketeers challenge. And the treasure of Soliano is rings. Woo. I, I love how those two kids in the background are perfectly synchronized as if they, you know, they rehearsed the fuck out of this day. They knew one day Sonic would pass to the Legends of the Three Musketeers challenge, so they rehearsed the fuck day and night that they rehearsed this, the, the same dance and, you know, per it, it paid off perfectly because they are in perfect sync with each other. What do you mean, technical limitations of the console. No, no, they, they they rehearsed the hell out of that dance routine. There's no other explanation. Anyway. But now, thankfully, what we just got there from the New, new City's shop was the Bounce Bracelet, which, you know, if you uh familiar with the Bounce Bracelet in Sonic Adventure 2 or the Bubble Shield in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, it's pretty much the same thing, only uh, the only difference here is that you, you can't move exactly when you're bouncing, which is the only problem I have with it. But thankfully, with the bounce person now, we can take care of bigger enemies without having to constantly spam the homing attack. And, you know, that's that's a good thing in my book. But another side mission here, now we're actually pulling a reverse Superman 64. Because now instead of rescuing a car from missiles and shit, we're actually destroying this car. Because apparently this guy in the car stole something from this woman and he's trying to make a getaway and nothing's happening. And, whoop. I can only say that you know, just follow it. Just be, just be relentless. Uh, just be relentless, and 
You get the S rank, no problem. Uh, Sonic's off center there. Face completely obscured by the <laughs> result screen. Actually, actually, um, for some of the side missions, they actually load up like a highway section of Soliana, and I was, th I always wondered if they're planning on making a level out of that, but it never comes to any fruition. So, you know, yeah, I'm glad. Like, you know, some side missions don't, you know, lazily reuse the hub world for their locales, but you know, it kind of makes you wonder if they had like some kind of level theme plan, like, uh, you know, uh, the typical highway level setting that we have in 3D Sonic games at this point. But now it's time for another side mission, and can you guess what we're doing here? Acrobatic Circus Scout? Come on. Come on, now you can guess what we're doing. Come on. That's right. More rings. Ugh. I just... Well, there's no time to waste. <laughs> I'm not, I, I can't even say anything at this point, because, you know, we, we've already done this with Sonic before, and we did it with Tails, so... Nothing different here, you're just going through more rings. And the only thing I could say is if you want the S rank, you pretty much just have to get them all on your one trip. You can't waste any time backtracking to get a ring you missed. Well, you can do it one time because I'm actually going to miss a, a ring uh, in part of a trail and I'll have to go back and get it. And I still S rank the mission, so you can screw up at least once, but that's about it. See, I, I missed that ring there, so now I have to go back and get it. Um... Later on down the road, we'll, uh, from the shop, we'll be start. We'll start to get the gem power ups, which I can't wait because they're so much fun to use because of this game's shoddy ass programming. But uh, last part, I mentioned that uh, you can only get the invincibility power up. That's the only one that returns. But uh, a lot of you have mentioned that the power sneakers actually do make an appearance yeah. in uh, one of Shadow's missions and well, well, personal space. There, Sonic. Jesus Christ. Um, and I believe, like uh, in two-player mode, the power sneakers are one of the power ups you can collect. You know to have easier time beating your opponent but ladies and gentlemen i, I apologize for uh, completely having you know an idiot moment there because i have played all the shadow side missions i should have remembered there was power sneakers there but two player mode nah you got me there because i never i never ever really experimented with this game's two player mode which maybe i'll show off later down the road if, if i can just drag a certain someone down here but anyway, uh, another reason why we need the bounce burst is so we can gain access to the stages, uh, the, the subworld's, uh, the hub world's next stage, which is Radical Train. We're pull pulling into our inner portal there. I love that. Okay. So this is Radical Train. This is uh, personally one of my favorite levels of the entire game. I don't know why exactly. I think the whole premise of, you know, you're trying to catch up to a bullet train before it runs into a, uh, an explosive wall. I don't know why. Yeah, combined with the game's music, and I don't, I, I don't know, it, I like this level. And, it, you know, it's level like this that I really wish that, you know, every level were as consistent as, you know, as fun as this one. I don't know why I really like this level so much. But, what I was getting to anyway is that the gimmick of Radical Train is that Princess Elise is inside this bullet train, and you have to catch up with the bullet train in order to uh, save it from driving into an explosive wall. There are like uh, three times, or it's two or three times where you have to flick a switch before the train heads into an explosive wall. And if not, then uh, if the train runs into the wall, then you lose life because presumably Princess Celeste died and caused the Iblis to be released, and you know we doomed, doomed us all. In fact, going into that, why the hell would Eggman risk Princess Celeste's life if he still hadn't gotten the secret to the Flames of Disasters from her yet? I mean. I'm pretty sure Dr. Eggman is familiar with the concept of the Batman Gambit, where, you know, he's he hopes that Sonic would rescue Elise in time before the train explodes. But what if Sonic couldn't save Princess Elise? Well, he just he just totally detonated his entire plan in right of right in his face. It's stupid. You're risking you're risking your uh, your chance of world domination on a gambit. It's just. And it does pay off, you know, Dr. Eggman does make the right choice, but still, the in the entire premise is stupid. Like I was mentioned earlier, uh, since we now have the bounce bracelet, we can uh, kill bigger enemies with ease, as I was showing off there earlier. And it's, it's definitely more comforting than abusing the homing attack left and right. But if you want to get anywhere faster, you, you just use that gravity-defying homing attack to get on the rails. You'll have an easier time. I'll be able to move faster if I go on top of the train instead of being on the rails. That is a goddamn lie, Sonic. He means the uh, he means the opposite, actually. I don't know if that was a botched translation or anything, but you move faster going on top of the rails and not on the train. Why the hell would you go? On? Never mind. Those seem to be 
Anyway, here's what I'm talking about. Homing attack, bounce attack, boom. They get enemies are dead right off the bat. I love that. You can also homing attack on the switches if, you know, want an easier time finding them. But now it's time for Radical Train's mock speed section. And this is actually, to me, one of the more bearable mock speed sections because they do give you a little room to work with, except here, which is impossible to avoid getting hit. I'm sorry, like, every time I played Radical Speedway, uh, Radical Speedway, Radical Train's uh, mock speed section, I always get hit there because the trains are always positioned in a spot where I can't help but run into them. You know, maybe if I didn't, you know, use the light speed dash, maybe, but I don't know exactly how you're supposed to avoid those train cars. But now the later half of the mock speed sections, now we're just tra uh, chasing after the train. And when it starts blinking, that means they, that cart is about to explode, which you can avoid easily just by moving left and right, which I failed to do right there. I never got that invincibility box <laughs> that we just ran past. There's an extra life here to the right ramp if you want to get that. There's also a silver medal to the left, but, you know, silver medals are pointless. Just get that extra life. Oh no, the rock is on fire. Too Not anymore. Easy. No, sweat. <laughs> no why, why was the rock on fire? I don't even remember what the I don't even remember what the rank I got. Did I get an A? Oh, we got a gold medal. I, hmm. I knew it! Oh, I knew you'd return. You had to. Huh? You again! This time, there will be no more interruptions! The Iblis Trigger must die! Sonic... Ha! Well, I didn't do anything. Uh, that wasn't even a minute! It's time to end this! Mephilus! Why are you getting in my way? I'm Shadow. Shadow the Hedgehog. I gotta say that the crossed arm pose doesn't look good on any Sonic character ever. Because in order to do a cross arm pose successfully, you've gotta have at least shoulders. I mean, well, they don't. So it looks like he's just grabbing his elbows, or just the side of his chest with his enormous hands. Not stop it. You have nowhere to go. I would rather die than be your prisoner again. Hmm. So what are you going to do, princess? Do you plan to jump? I do like how smug Eggman is there, because he knows he knows very damn well that Egg at least is not gonna jump, otherwise she would have done it before. Yeah, that would have killed her anyway. Mm, you won't get away that easily. All right, time for another. Well, I guess you could say Eggman boss battle. This is one of his contraptions. This is the Egg Genesis. And well, ladies and gentlemen, for this uh, particular boss battle, I'm going to show you two ways how to damage him. Just like the brain scratcher run. I gotta thank Lewis for uh, showcasing that because I had no idea you can do it that way. Uh, anyway, what I was getting into. Uh. First, for the, um, the legitimate way of damaging Egg Genesis, you have to wait until he lowers the contraption, and he'll summon a bunch of uh, mechs near his uh, wings. Wait for the enemies to spawn up, homing attack to get up to the wings, and then run up the wing. What you need to do is use the bounce bracelet on the on top of the head to damage it. Once you hit it enough time, Sonic will uh, fly up into the air and fall down, as so, and lather, rinse, repeat. And every every time you uh, take a, a, a fourth of its uh, health away, it will lose one of its wings. So. Well, it doesn't really do anything. I mean, the attacks are still easy to avoid. I do love how I was able to kick that rock up there. But now it's time for the illegitimate way. Yes. You're not, your eyes are not deceiving you. I just homing attacked onto that core on the bottom. Now, granted, when you're first playing through uh, the Egg Genesis fight, you kind of figured that's where you have to hit him anyway because, well, I mean, look at it. It looks like something you would want to hit in a Sonic battle. But no, for Sonic, you're supposed to actually climb on the wings and hit the head with a bounce bracelet. Now, the reason why we can homing attack onto the core is because later down the road, when we're controlling a certain pothead, uh, he'll also be fighting the Egg Genesis. But he needs to use uh, his psychokinesis in order to grab objects and fling them at the bottom of the core right there. But since they didn't bother changing the programming for the boss battle, Sonic can homing attack on the core himself. And since 
you know, the homing attack can defy gravity in this game, it works. And it's without a doubt the fastest way to deal with the Egg Genesis, and it's also the safest way, because you should never get hit by Egg Genesis if you abuse the programming as such. And I love just, I love how he just flies through that like that. And he, actually, if you're positioned Sonic uh, in the right spot, Sonic will actually fly through the Egg Genesis when he's uh, recovering from the homing attack. But now the Egg Genesis is actually pulling an Egg Viper, where it attempts very piss poorly to uh, land on top of Sonic, and well, let me just say, if if you ever get hit by that, then that was incredible. I, you put the controller down, play a different game. Well, granted, I want you to do that anyway, but you should never ever get hit by a Genesis desperation attack. It is so slow and telegraphed, and the moment the Genesis hits the floor, uh, the battle ends. So you should never ever ever get hit by the desperation attack ever. But anyway, that's the end of part six. For uh, part seven, we'll. I don't know exactly what we're doing. Maybe Princess Elise will get captured again within the next 15 seconds. We'll see. But tune in for part seven. See you guys later.